Welcome back. All right, so uh, I've been looking at careers lately and realized that, you know, the 2003 draft absolutely stacked. Um, I wanted to do another profile of a 2003 draft pick, and Shea Weber stands out. Shea Weber's not technically retired, but the last time he played was in 2021. He's not coming back. Um, he is considered to be retired, although his contract is still active. So why retire when they're still paying you? You're, you're not able to play because of injury. You make your money. So Shea Weber's drafted again, number 49 overall in 2003. The, the odds on the, the, the draft that's probably going to create the most Hall of Fame careers. 1979 would be in that conversation as well. And someday we'll be talking about the 2015 draft and all the Hall of Famers from that as well. Uh, but Weber drafted by the Nashville Predators, a team that's very good at drafting defensemen. Um, the Nashville team that, that has existed throughout has always been good at developing defensemen who are pretty darn good. And Shea Weber might be the best of the bunch, although Roman Yossi, definitely one of the best of the bunch as well. And he has won a Norris Trophy. So Weber debuts in 0506. Of course, 0405, there's not an NHL season. He couldn't have debuted there. Plays 28 games in 0506, two goals, eight assists for 10 points. In the playoffs, he adds two goals in four games. And with Weber, he's got a great shot. He's a very good offensive defenseman, but he's good defensively as well. Honestly, really good, well-rounded defenseman. 2006-2007, plays 79 games that season. 17 goals, 23 assists, 40 points. 17 goals stands out. Uh, one of the leaders amongst goal scorers on the blue line throughout his career, and it starts there. In the playoffs, three assists in five games. 2007-2008, 54 games played in Nashville, six goals, 14 assists, 20 points. So a bit of a slump that third year for him. In the playoffs, he adds a goal and three assists for four points in six games. And then he breaks out. 2008-2009, 81 games, 23 goals, 30 assists for 53 points. Uh, no playoffs. However, he's fourth at Norris Trophy voting, and he plays in the All-Star game. So now people are starting to realize just how good Shea Weber is. Getting 23 goals from the blue line will uh, will make people realize that. 2009-2010, uh, 78 games, 16 goals, 27 assists, 43 points in the playoffs. Two goals, one assist, three points in six games. He's seventh in Norris voting that year. So still top 10 in Norris voting. One of the best defensemen on in the NHL at that point. I was going to say on the blue line, but clearly on the blue line. 2010-2011, uh, 82 games, 16 goals, 32 assists, 48 points. In the playoffs, 12 games, 3 goals, 2 assists, 5 points. He's a first-team All-Star. He's second in Norris voting and plays in the All-Star game again that year. 2011-2012, or no, 2010, yeah, 2011-2012, I'm right. Uh, 78 games, 19 goals. Uh, 30 assists for 49 points. So pretty consistent scoring between 16 and 19 goals, between 43 and 49 points. In the playoffs, 10 games, 2 goals, 1 assist, 3 points. First team All-Star and second in Norris voting again. And an All-Star. Uh, the one frustrating thing during that time is Nashville's a good team. They're not able to get over the hump in the playoffs. 2012-2013. Lockout shortened season. He plays all 48 games. Nine goals, 19 assists for 28 points. He's eighth in Norris voting that year. So again, top 10 in the Norris vote. 2013-2014, still in Nashville. 79 games, 23 goals, 33 assists, 56 points. Third in Norris voting and a second team All-Star. And along the way, he becomes their, their team captain, of course. This is my Shea Weber jersey. I actually have two Shea Weber jerseys from Nashville. Same era, it's the white version of this. I have Weber as well. So... 2014-2015, 78 games, 15 goals, 30 assists for 45 points. In the playoffs, just two games played, one assist. Second team All-Star, fourth in Norris voting, and he plays in the All-Star game yet again that year. 2015-2016, uh, 78 games, 20 goals, 31 assists, 51 points. In the playoffs, 14 games, three goals, four assists, seven points. So Nashville, nice little run there, and obviously things are going relatively well uh the messier award for leadership goes to shea weber that year he's 10th in norris voting and he plays in the all-star game and then the ridiculousness happened uh we saw the the hall trade that day for uh, adam larson but on june 29th the big trade was shea weber going to the montreal canadians for pk suban and it's interesting because both of these players had contracts that neither team really was all that happy about the contract Shea Weber had had actually been signed by the Philadelphia Flyers. So we're going to detour down to here 
before we get into the Montreal part portion of his career. July 19th of 2012, it came out that Shea Weber had been signed to an offer sheet by the Philadelphia Flyers. And it's a 14-year contract worth of combined, all adds up to $110 million. But there's a lot of poison pills in this, a huge signing bonus up front. This is a team in 2012 that wasn't seen as being likely to be able to equal this contract and, and sign it. And so for David Poyle, it leaves him in a situation he doesn't want to be in. Do you let him go to Philadelphia, take draft picks from them as, as a response to them, uh, signing you know, a player who is going to be one of the best defensemen in the league for a long time to come? Uh, do, do you let him go or do you keep him? So the Preds matched the offer sheet five days later. You have a week to match the offer sheet, and they matched it in five days. Now, there's one year left in this contract, but this contract was ridiculous. $13 million signing bonus in each of the first four seasons. They did their best to make sure that Nashville could not match this, would not match this. Um, Nashville not seen as being a team that had as much money on hand as Philadelphia would. Philadelphia, you know, looking to basically amp up their blue line a bit and adding Shea Weber would have done that. And initially there were some expectations, maybe Nashville can't match this offer. And so it was a little bit tense. But the first four years of the contract pay him $14 million in total. Keep in mind, $13 million of that is a signing bonus, meaning his, his pay during the season is a paltry $1 million. dollars. Uh, and the contract ends with only $1 million a season for the final three years. So this is a contract that's designed where you have the salary cap hit at the end is very, very low to drag down the salary cap average to seven, I think 7.857 million. And this contract is one of those that the NHL really didn't like. And so when you look at, you know, eight year contracts and you say, oh, eight years seems like a lot. Nah, 14 is a lot. Um, and with Weber, of course, why wouldn't you sign the deal if you're Shea Weber? Sure, I like a 14 year contract. I like to have some certainty. And uh, so he has that contract that Nashville didn't like. Meanwhile, P.K. Subban was under a contract. Montreal didn't really want to pay either. So it worked out pretty well that way, that each team gets rid of a contract. Obviously, uh, Subban's contract a lot shorter than the contract for Weber. But Weber brings something different to that Montreal blue line. And in year one, Montreal wins the trade. 78 games, 17 goals, 25 assists, 42 points that first year in Montreal. Six games in the playoffs, one goal, two assists, three points. He finishes sixth in Norris voting, and he plays in the All-Star game. Now, P.K. Subban would have good years after that, and Weber never ends up being top ten in the Norris voting again, and then the debate over who wins and loses the trade would continue. But, I mean, Weber was a pretty good pickup for Montreal. 2017-2018, uh, he plays 26 games for the Habs, six goals, ten assists, 16 points. Misses a lot of time. And, you know, you could see that he wasn't necessarily the player he'd been before, but he's still pretty good. 2018-2019 plays 58 games, 14 goals, 19 assists, 33 points. 2019-2020 plays 65 games, so he plays more considering that at the pause every team was around 70 games played. 15 goals, 21 assists, 36 points. In the playoffs, 10 games, 3 goals, 2 assists, 5 points. He played in the All-Star game in 2020, and he was part of that team that knocked off Toronto in the first round. A uh, huge upset there, and Shea Weber a big part of that. 2020-2021, a 56-game schedule. He plays 48 of the 56 games. Six goals, 13 assists, 19 points. In the playoffs, 22 games, one goal, five assists, six points. As Montreal goes all the way to the Stanley Cup Final, the first time that he'd been in the final, because the year after he gets traded out of Nashville, Nashville goes all the way to the Stanley Cup Final in 2017. Uh, P.K. Subban, a part of that run all the way to the final against Pittsburgh. So it ends with the Montreal Canadiens losing in that final. Means that both Nashville and Montreal went to Stanley Cup finals with Nashville with Subban and then Weber with Montreal. But then it came out. As soon as the playoffs were done, it was pretty obvious that Carey Price, it was dodgy as to whether or not he was going to play again. And it was basically said Weber wouldn't. He had problems with his left foot and left ankle. He'd had that injury for years. He'd played through it. And eventually it just got to the point where he couldn't play anymore. He has not played since the 2021 playoffs came to an end. Uh, he has played a total of 1,038 games, 224 goals, 365 assists, 589 points. Remarkable totals again for defensemen in the playoffs, 97 games, 18 goals, 24 assists for 42 points. 
So his contract's been traded twice since he last played. Uh, June 16th of 2022 was traded to Vegas for Dodonov. So that was so they could put it in LTIR, have a little bit of flexibility. And Dodonov's contract went to Montreal. February 22nd of 2023, he was traded with a fifth round pick to the Arizona Coyotes for Dyson Mayo, meaning that that contract, last I looked, is still on the books of the team that is now in Utah, but that is the only contract on injured reserve for the former Arizona Coyotes at this point. The other contract's coming to an end this June. This is the only one that's still going to be in effect next season, and it's he's not going to play. Uh, but he had a great career. And uh, honestly, it's it's weird that he never won the Norris Trophy because I when I was putting this together, I was like, well, he won at least one of them, right? Nope, he was second twice. Uh, 2010 and 2014, he won Olympic gold. So if you're making the case for him to go into the Hall of Fame, those gold medals definitely help. So does a World Cup gold in 2016. 2007, he won gold at the World Championships. He also won silver at 2009 at the World Championships. And in 2005, he won gold at the World Juniors. So he was the Stanley Cup away from having a championship in almost every form you could imagine. But still, a really good, successful career and one of the best defensemen of his generation and another remarkably excellent player from the 2003 entry draft, which was just stacked. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you've not done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.